and welcome to the Thursday, February 1st regular meeting of the Hopkins Head School Committee. I will ask that you all stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. So tonight we have um, Mina and John participating remotely. Neither of them um, is able to attend the meeting in person, but we do have a physical quorum, so we are able to proceed under the remote participation policy. And if we take any votes, we'll do those by roll call. So I'm gonna quickly read through the um, agenda, and then we will probably take one thing out of order and we will get right underway. So uh, we'll start the night with recognitions, followed by our first opportunity for public comment. Tonight, under report, reports for the school committee, we have a student council report, a superintendent report, a school committee chair report, liaison reports, and an FY18 financial report. Under new business, we'll be asked, talking about the middle school football pilot program. We will be reviewing our school bus transportation contract, and we will review um, a budget transfer. We'll take up school committee policy BGC for a first reading. Um, and then under old business, we will take up school committee policy EHB for a second reading, as well as policy IJNDB, internet acceptable use for a second reading. Um, we'll have a discussion about the accept board of directors and we will have a further conversation about our FY19 budget. Following that, we will have our second opportunity for public comment. Um, and finally, we do have need of an executive session at the end of the meeting in order to conduct strategy sessions and preparations for negotiations with non-unit personnel to include the superintendent, director of student services, and the athletic director. And we will reconvene an o o excuse me, open session solely for the purposes of adjourning. So um, when our partners from the Appropriations Committee arrive, we'll take our FY19 budget conversation out of order at that time so that they can participate as well as um, John has to get on a plane at nine o'clock. So I would like to have that conversation before nine o'clock. And other than that, we'll just go through in order as that's okay with everybody. Okay, so um, without further ado, I'll turn it over to you, Dr. McLeod, for recognitions. You know what, I can do recognitions. I was actually gonna do um, it under my report, but it's a perfect place for recognitions. Um, right, so I would like to recognize um, the, the collaboration and the work of our public service, our fire, uh, public safety, I should say, fire police, um, high school crisis response team. Um, it, as Chief Lee um, indicated um, in our joint press release, um, really reinforced the protocols that we have in place. It, uh, it worked efficiently, safely, calmly, and what the team wanted me to comment on tonight for the public, anybody that's listening, is how wonderful the parent cooperation was. Um, people may be aware or may not understand completely how many decisions are having to be made in a situation where there's so many unknowns. And I'm looking over at two of the students who are sitting there tonight. Um, obviously, student safety is the uppermost concern and always is. Um, but there's a lot of information coming at us. There are a lot of things that need to be decided. And the trust that the parents and the community put in our team today was really felt by um, our public safety um, and to the point where they did comment as they left to, you know, they knew that we had this meeting tonight and said, would you please thank everybody for us because they let us do our job um, by following the, the requests that were made to come in the driveway that we asked people to come in. Um, the students were amazing. Um, the, the situation was ever changing and it went from a shelter in place to I think 20 minutes later um, a dismissal and I, I stood in the hallway outside of Mr. Bishop's office and I just watched the kids they were calm they were quiet they, they, did, they looked you know very um, uh, people did not look afraid it was it felt to me like they were understanding that this was something that needed to happen for their safety but there was no panic 
and it was orderly and exactly the way that Mr. Bishop asked for them to dismiss. And honestly, I think they were out of the building in less than five minutes. Um, the only students that remained behind were students that needed rides. Um, but I think it was the cooperate, I know that it was the cooperation of everybody involved, everybody letting everybody else do their jobs, including the students letting their teachers and their administration do their jobs. You know, they were not walking out the door asking questions about what's going on, what's going on, which, you know, I probably would have done <laughs> if I were them. Um, so uh, I, I feel like the incident went off. Um, obviously, it was, it was regret, regrettable that we had anything in, at all, but we followed product protocol, and um, we're, I'm very, very pleased, and I'd like to recognize everybody that worked together today um, in this situation. Thank you, and thank you to all of you. I know this was a very stressful and long day um, for you, but the communication, I thought, as a parent was excellent. Um, it was very clear. It was very timely, and um, so, you know, I felt at all times that I knew what was happening and that my child was in good hands, um, and uh, so... I know we have our students coming up in a minute, and I'm sure that they'll share with us what their experience was. I today. hope so. But, um, but yeah, thank you again from from us as well to everybody involved, um, the administration as well as the police and the fire. Everybody really works so well together, and yeah. I, it's clear yeah. that you've put a lot of time and effort into proactively planning for situations like this. You never there's can been extensive the thing, but there's been extensive training with the entire administrative team in an inc incident command. Um, and, and I've been told that it's pretty unique to our community. Um, certainly other communities participate in, in something similar, but um, again, just feeling like we are all following the same protocols made it just very efficient today. That's excellent. Well, Great. thank you. Um, and are there other recognitions or? No. We, okay. So I'm not going to forget today that this is now our first opportunity for public comment. There is no one here from the public to comment. Um, so we'll move right into our, our reports to the school committee. And our first report is a student council report. So we have David Antaki and Emma Edwards here today. So come on up. Thank you for coming back to school. <coughs> Thanks for having us. Having us. Yes, no problem at all. So, thank you, thank you for having us as always. Um, do you want us to talk about like our experience today? I would, I, I would love that. Okay, so um, for me, I was in here when uh, Mr. Bishop announced a shelter in place, and so you know, you you normally expect it's just a drill um, because you know we do them pretty often um, which is a good thing but then you know like 40 minutes after or or 20 or something like that um, then he said that it was going to be a dismissal and then we got up and left it was nothing it wasn't it wasn't crazy like you said it wasn't panicking you know we always I always you know I I, I didn't really uh think much of it at first because I felt I felt fine I felt safe but as I was walking out I, we got the email of you know explaining what was going on which was I thought was pretty pretty fast and pretty um, pretty good communication of what was going on um, and then like as a couple um, you know like hours every hour there was an email coming out explaining more as information became available of what was going on, so um, I thought that was really good because, you know, normally I would I would normally think that you know that wouldn't happen um, right. for students to you know get that kind of information about yeah. what's going on. Yep. But, yeah. Um. Okay, I was in a web page design class. Um, and just like the regular shelter in place, like everyone was just like continuing on with what we were doing. And then when he came on, I remember the entire class being completely silent, like listening to what he had to say. And then just like walking out calmly, I remember calling my brother and I'm just like, meet me at the car. 
Um, and then I will say, like, news travels very quickly, so I feel like everyone's on their phones. Like, you're just seeing, like, notifications um, of just people talking, so I feel like the news spread so quickly. Like, I knew what was happening when I was, like, walking out of the building, um, and I feel like that's helpful, having technology as well. Um, but I will say, like, I'm very proud of how everyone, like, responded. No one was, like, screaming and, like, running out. Everyone just was, like, okay, going to my car or going to my bus. And it was just, like, very well executed. So that was good. <laughs> good job. Thank you, guys. And, you know, it's, it's really interesting speaking with you and hearing your perspective and t understanding where you were at the moment. Um, because the biggest challenge in, in perhaps the entire protocol was managing the message. Right, and once it's out there, or once misinformation is out there, it's so hard to get back in. So that was part of our timeline: was how do we manage the message in the best way to make the best decision and get the kids out safely, right, um, while still managing the message. And so it's good to hear that that we were successful at that because you're right. I mean, yeah. it like wildfire, yeah. Um, to the point where we weren't even able to share with the teachers at first. Right, so that's very good feedback for me to hear. Yeah. Thank you. Um, so I guess we'll move on to uh, other yes, happenings here at the drama, high school. Other things are happening. <laughs> so um, first today was um, we wore red or, um, yeah, for the American Heart Association to, wear, to raise awareness for um, heart screenings and heart awareness. Um, and this isn't the same, but the Live for Evan found, or Live for Evan is doing heart screenings February 16th. Um, and yeah, actually, I have a nice poster here, because this is, this is one of the things student council does, is we make posters. This is how we, we try to get word out to the school, along with like the student memo and the, you know, digital-based stuff. We try to do the you know, old-fashioned paper and drawing. So we hang those up around the school. last line to the superintendent? <laughs> Sorry, what? It's okay, I already saw it. <laughs> um, yeah, that was hanging up out there. I decided to grab it. Um, so that was us. Um, Encouraging people to wear red to raise awareness for heart screening, and um, yeah. Okay, and then the next thing coming up is February fifteenth is Junior Parent College Admissions Night. So we have representatives from Providence College, Boston College, Dean College, Brighton Academy, the Rhode Island College, St. Louis University, and from the Marine Corps as well. Um, and along with that, we also have um, Accept Collaborative for students with special needs. Um, to like get information about like education after high school, um, so that's coming up as well. <laughs> uh, sports teams are getting ready for tournaments, both state and sectional tournaments. So uh, we wish our sports teams best of luck. Um, and then after February break, course selection starts, which I know a lot of students are excited about deciding their courses, um, and also having February free homework homework free um, break. Um, I love that. It's like one of my best, <laughs> like, favorite things. Um, and then the Be Free Coffee House was February 9th, but it was moved to March. Okay. Uh, next Friday, February 9th, is a Hiller Day. Um, Hiller Days are very nice. Um, MCAS bio retests on Monday 5th and 6th. Um, is that for sophomores? Only Maybe for juniors. Juniors. Didn't okay. Pass, yeah. Okay. Um, and then tomorrow is a professional day for teachers. So um, for us students, it's a day off. So we get a three-day weekend <laughs> for the Super Bowl <laughs> as well. Nice. Yeah. And yeah, uh, that is all we have. Great. Well, thank you very much. You're welcome <laughs> to stay if you'd like to kick off your three-day weekend by watching the school committee in action. But we understand if you'd like to head home. You may have other things planned. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to say I love that you've left the poster in, though. That's mm -hmm. awesome. Thank you. Yeah. We, uh, they're all hanging up all, all around the school. Nice. Yeah. That's good to pull our attention to. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And thank you. Thank you yeah, again thank you. for your comments and for your behavior this, this morning. And, um, you know, the fact that you guys 
pay attention and cooperate so well, and uh, you know, really leads to everybody increases everybody's safety and leads to a lot smoother process. So, nice job. Yeah, thank you as thank well. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Have a nice weekend. Thank you as well. Enjoy the three-day weekend. Okay. Um, following that, we have the superintendent's report. So I have a couple of other things um, to report uh, other than the highlight of the day. Um, and that is that we had had a discussion, maybe last meeting, maybe a couple of meetings ago, about funding for the L position. Mm -hmm. um, and I just wanted to, in my report, um, give you some feedback on um, what Susan and I learned about the funding in this regard um, and why that position would not be appropriate use of the funds. Um, I can't remember the third prong, but the two prongs that kind of booted us out were that it has to be an emergency. I didn't really feel like we could call it an emergency, and it has to be unexpected. Um, given that we've been talking to you about the growing L population and the ongoing needs, it's not exactly unexpected either. Um, and so we felt that we really, you know, would not be able to apply for funds for that, for that position. Um, and as always, <laughs> Susan will work and find a Find a way, that's, that's what you always do, is find a way. Um, the position has been posted. I know that you approved the position. It was not pending funding, um, but you had asked that we explore whether or not that was a possibility. Um, and then the other, I will turn over to Dr. Cavanaugh to report on the assistant superintendent oh, search. excellent, thank you. Okay, so Kim did post the position just after our last meeting. You know that the postings stay open until Friday, February 9th, and so the resumes are coming in, and as they come in, we've been reviewing them, so that's sort of where we are. Very good. In a good place. Great. Okay. You have a committee okay. together. Do you? Kim is putting the committee yeah. together, yes. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> oh, sorry. <coughs> okay. I'm done. Thank goodness. <laughs> All right. Oh. Masterful. Oh, Thank you're you. done, done. Yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so moving on to the school committee chair report. We received no public comment that I can think of um, since our last meeting through email. Um, I was called today by the Metro West um, paper, and I was able to forward your email um, that summarized what happened today. Um, so that's the only contact I've had with the newspaper. Uh, no, I'm sorry. He also called me to ask about the budget um, issues. Okay. So I did respond to those. That was last week. Um, and for people who um, are following our, our ongoing budget process, we did have a joint meeting with the Board of Selectmen on Monday night to talk about uh, with the Board of Selectmen with the Appropriations Committee with all of the department heads to talk about the budget um, challenges for this year. And that conversation will be ongoing. And we've scheduled two additional meetings, um, two additional joint meetings, one for a week from today, and then the other one is February 25th. It's a Monday in the last week of February. Um, so we'll continue to, to work with our town partners on that process as well. So other than that, I can just report about the warrants. I have approved for payment the accounts payable warrants 18-047, 18-048, 18-049, 18-050 and 18-051. All warrants have been included in your packet. I also have approved for payment the payroll war warrant S18015, and that warrant has been included in your packet as well. Um, so why don't we move into liaison reports, and I, we're waiting for Rebecca Roback, and then we'll go right into the budget. That discussion. I have one. Um, the Center School Reuse Committee is holding its first public forum this Saturday uh, at 10 a.m. and um, so you know there's been a step there's been a uh, several emails and um, a posting concerning on the town website about the survey um, for public input on what you know um, what community Jean, members. I, if I may interrupt I'm having a really hard time hearing some of the things that um, I can be Jen and Nancy are speaking to I can be way louder Mina you might, <laughs> awesome. might want to, you know what, you might want to mute your computer and watch it on HCAM so that, because they're t talking into the HCAM microphones. That might work oh. better. Okay, thank you. So the short version is 10 a.m. Saturday. Center School Reuse Committee is holding a public forum, and they have surveys available for the community input in terms of what they 
the community feels is an appropriate reuse of all or part of center school. There you go. Did you have any? So I, I was going to say the bullying uh, prevention and intervention committee, met, I was not able to be there, so I, I will let Dr. Kavanaugh if you want to def. Sure. Just. So at our last meeting, all of our subcommittees had met twice, and we had put all of their work back into the document. And we, as a group, went through the document the way it looked. We spent an awful lot of time on the scenarios that the kids had written, and then we got to a place where we were looking at, do we have this or do we not? And we decided that we probably needed to revamp things like our district climate team. But overall, the document is looking good, and we're hoping maybe one to two more meetings before we bring all of that back here to you. Great. Thank you. And I have no liaison reports today, so um, why don't we move right into our FY18 financial report? Jean, I do have a couple of updates, oh, if I may. Sorry. Yep. Um, one on the community communications. Um, we continued our work on creating a community-wide calendar. And Jim Cousins from HCAM, he did a fantastic job with research and presenting options um, of the calendar. And all members who were present, they pitched in. We had members from the library, the Youth Commission, EHOP, Youth and Family Services, Senior Center, and everybody pitched in. And from uh, from the schools and um, you know, what has been requested is if we could add more detail to the events that currently exist, the calendar would simply pull in from the Google Calendar. So the hope is that we would pilot uh, the calendar sometime in February and uh, work through that pilot. So that's on the community communication end. Um, the other update is on the tech end. Tech had conducted a workshop on concussions and head injuries in sports. And I attended that workshop with Dr. Cav uh, Dr. Carol Cavanaugh and our athletic director, uh, Ms. King. Uh, it was an excellent uh, panel, very well experienced people and a well-rounded panel. There were folks from, uh, you know, the Somerville athletic trainer was there. There was someone from the Department of Public Health, uh, an NFL injury spotter. Um, so again, a very well-rounded team there. I came back with a much better understanding of issues uh, related to concussion, where the research is, what are some of the open questions. Um, I thought it was amazing, and uh, Liz McGonigal actually shared some of those uh, presentation, and I'd be happy to share that with the rest of the school committee. Uh, I don't know if Dr. Kavanaugh or uh, D. King are there, if they want to add something to that. No, I think... One of the things that made us feel comfortable was that Dee felt like a lot of the things that they were talking about were things that we were already doing. Um, the two, the five presenters, there was one who had done an awful lot of brain-based research around concussions, and we thought she was pretty dynamic. She was the person that we thought maybe would be helpful to bring in to speak to, you know, coaches or, you know, the school nurse. But it was, it was a very good presentation, I agree. Great, thank you. Is there anything else, Mina? No, that's it. Okay, John, did you have anything? <coughs> I'm going to take that as a note. <laughs> he has his, he's muted. Um, okay, so now we'll move in, sorry, we'll move into the FY18 financial report. Thank you. Um, so enclosed, you have the financial report through January 24th. And just as a reminder to everyone, to date we've added four FTEs to respond to the um, increase in population at center school and for the L population. Um, so the other pieces that are causing stressors to the budget are unforeseen for special education, um, occupational day changes, and our legal costs continue to increase. Um, so at this time, we've put on a district-wide uh, spending freeze, and you know, just a, also a reminder, you know, the budget does remain fluid. Um, things can continue to change, so we'll just continue to, to monitor this as, as the year goes on. Thank you. And um, does anybody have any questions? I don't think so. Thank you. I do, um, Jean. Okay. If I'm so um, I know, Susan, we did some back and forth on the email. Thank you for your responses there. But just for the benefit of everybody, um, could you just speak to you know the plan to cover the deficit beside the freeze that has been recommended? 
Um, well, again, it's there. There really is only the budget freeze that can cover the cost because at the end of the the year we have to have a, a balanced budget. So we need things to not be spent. We really don't have any other resources to, to cover a deficit. So you would be watching, you know, this will be watched closely as um, in the upcoming months. Correct. Okay. I'm sorry um, if I can't Also, um, I was just looking to understand uh, the legal budget, how much are we over by? At this time, it's projected to be over by 30,000, but we'll continue to watch that because I do believe that'll continue to grow. Okay. Thank you. And uh, I, I guess the other general question was, you know, what is the threshold which raises the alarm? Um, any deficit spending raises the alarm. <laughs> We're past that, the alarm. <laughs> there there right? really isn't a, a threshold because, again, at the end of the day, we have to deliver a balanced budget. Thank you. Thank you for bringing this to our attention. Did you have a question, Jen? No, I, I wasn't sure. I couldn't remember if it was answered, but I'm good. Thank you. Okay. It's on here. Thank you. Yep. And I just, I wanted to take a, a minute just to say, in my nine years here, I have never seen this much detail in a packet, honestly, ever. Thank you very much for, for, for giving us all of this information. Um, I just thought that was remarkable. I wish that we were not in our situation, <laughs> and I know you do too, and I know that we'll continue to, to figure out what, we're, what we do as we go forward, but it's, it's really helpful, and you're, you're just giving us reports more frequently than we've gotten them even in the past, which was fairly frequent compared to, to other towns and other departments, but um, it's just it's really helpful to feel like we're just more constantly in the loop of this. So um, I don't have a great idea, but I appreciate the information. Um, all right, well, we're still waiting. Oh, no, here's Rebecca. So why don't we, if it's all right with all of you, why don't we take our FY19 budget conversation out of order now, um, and we can invite Mr. Manning and Ms. Roback to join us, um, and <laughs> then we'll move back to new business um, after that. So just for the purposes of the minutes, this is actually item... <coughs> Um, D under old business, the FY19 budget. So come on up and join us. Thank you for being here. Um, this is a lot of meetings in one week on the same topic. <laughs> nice. So I'll just turn it over to you. Dr. McLean. Oh, actually, and I will turn it right out over okay. to pass the buck to down Susan. the road. Yeah. Okay. Um, so what we did is we pulled some of the slides that, um, kind of the important slides from the uh, public forum, but just to give you an update, as, as we were saying, the um, bus contract at the time was not signed. So now we have, um, which you will see later on, um, a different number for the bus contract. So we were able to reduce our budget based on the new contract that's being proposed tonight by over 181000 so with that change, you see that the um, increase now for FY19 is 6.9%. So that brought us down to um, $2.9 million increase. And just as a reminder, as we go through the, the budget drivers, um, when we look at our existing staff, um, the salary increase for our existing staff comes in at 2.9%. But again, just as a reminder that we reduced the existing staff by 15.9 FTEs um, before we began the process of really kind of looking at, at the rest of the budget. So we, we started with reducing and really looking for efficiencies in, in staffing. Um, so that was a reduction of 15.9 FTEs. And then when we looked at the enrollment and the changes in the, um, the uh, student population, that resulted in an increase of 15.5 FTEs. And so again, from an FTE standpoint, again, you know, it's not a one-for-one, one, but 
just as a reminder that we did look to reduce if we knew we needed to put in a teacher there may that may have been a reduction somewhere else in order to put that in place so the next piece it just gives you kind of those those budget drivers in an overall sense so just with staff and personnel together get you to that 3.6 percent which really was the the budget message and then the items that are really beyond our control is special education increase of 2%. The bus contract, which is nice to say it's come down, but it still is a 0.7% increase. The utilities for opening the marathon school, um, a 0.3. And then occupational day, again, something that really is not discretionary. So the, the changes in that is a, of course, that's, you know, small amount, 0.05. But then you get down to really that last line, of, line item that we um, talked about is really being the only thing that is discretionary. And those are the uh, district-wide expenses to, to run the program. And those are the really the only increases, which is a 0.25%. So this is where we struggle. These are, you know, outside of personnel, fixed costs, with the exception of that very last line item. And before you get into capital, Susan, um, <clears throat> I remind the committee and appropriations, and thank you for being here, um, that the reason this is on the agenda again tonight is because of our joint meeting where we were tasked with coming back to our budget to see where additional cuts might be made. And we felt that it was worth reminding, although I know you're very much aware of the process, <laughs> Um, the work that we've done since October and a, a key factor that Susan mentioned um, and you know Jean reminded me of last night or whenever we met um, was this is what we always do we always begin with reductions we always look at what are things that we can stop doing in order to start doing the things that we want to do so to hear now to go back and cut um, will mean, and we just wanted to reinforce by looking at the budget driver summary, it will mean programs. There, there, uh, it's really quite remarkable that other expenses, and we did charge our administrative team with coming with a level funded budget um, around any, and any time there was an increase that wasn't level funded under expenses, we brought them back in and took another look. Um, so there were very few that got past that level of scrutiny um, to the result of this, you know, overall over the entire uh, budget. And the other thing that comes to mind for me is including the increased enrollment. So we have more kids to buy supplies for. We have more furniture to buy for those kids to sit in and those teachers to sit in. We have more technology to bring in. And even with that, the increase is really very, very small. Um, so I thought that when Mr. Herr broke the budget down into percentages, into little pockets, I thought that was a really good way of looking at it. Um, I know that this, this is a slide that Susan had put together for us in our final budget presentation, and I think it makes it really um, di more easily digested or understood when you look at it this way and, understand, and even looking at starting before we even do anything, we're already almost at the percent increase that was the budget message, and we haven't done a thing. We're already at 2.9%. So the first thing we do is reduce, and we reduced 1.9%. Um, so there isn't any, there truly isn't anywhere to go in the operating budget that is not going to affect the quality of the programs that we offer, not only now, but also really importantly, preparing for the needs of the students that we know are coming to us um, and for the growth that's coming, but it's not just the growth. And you know that when you look at these positions under the personnel increases and, and the needs of the district that are being addressed by doing that. Um, and so that's why Sue and I thought, you know, it's worth taking a look at capital, um, but it also feels like it would be premature to be making recommendations for anything you know that we could potentially do without because we had this same conversation 
last year about some of the items and um, it, it really for us was more of an opportunity to review what is currently here. Um, I think the one thing that one of the things we've talked about that's under the turf field, that number that is requested is actually not completely accurate, right? That's correct. So, you know, again, as Dr. McLeod said, this is really just kind of, you know, we had that joint meeting um, with all the boards and all the department heads, which was a great meeting. Um, that, so this is kind of an update because we were actually able to move the number already with the bus contract. Um, it's still premature to go in beyond where we are. However, if there is something that's further charged, we could look at capital. And um, the turf field, that's correct. So 1.7 million of that project would be funded by CPC. Mm -hmm. um, so that would not be something that's added on to the uh, taxpayer um, debt. And then in addition, I believe that the, the group is also going to look for private uh, money donations that will again bring down the amount that would be a taxpayer effect as well. Mm -hmm. So even the turf number that's on here, will change in terms of what actually becomes a tax effect. Um, but some of these other items we could in the future have some discussions on, um, potentially removing them. But again, this is, you know, a fluid process. Right. So I don't think we're there yet. But this is just uh, something for you to have in the back of your mind that we, excuse me, could potentially bring up at a later meeting. We did meet with Mr. Kamalo today. Uh, Ms. Rothermick and I, and um, he has a, a lot of work um, in front of him. He shared with us in terms of having those meetings with other departments um, and with Board of Selectmen, individual Board of Selectmen conversations, um, as well as finance, financial advice and different people that he's working with um, to meet the gap um, between, you know, the, the, where he is in terms of not having a Director of Finance in position. And so um, he shared with us that there's, a, you know, a lot more work to be done before we're feeling confident that the number that the gap is is a solid one or a real one. So I we think that until that number is more clear to everybody, it would be premature to be looking at any further reductions to your budget. Okay. <clears throat> um, so just in terms of, of uh, today's conversation, first let's just see, does anybody have questions and then we can decide. So is it your recommendation that we should um, consider revoting with the new bus contract number factored in or just leave it alone and communicate that we'll be able comfortably to take that out and then we'll see if, there, if further reductions there need to be made and we'll vote at a later time. Yeah, so I think I, three times. I, exactly. Okay. So right. because we don't have <clears throat> definition of what the budget gap townwide is, okay. and you know if there is a potential of additional changes, I wouldn't revote the budget just yet. Just yet. Okay. Because we All don't right. have that direction from the town. But we certainly can communicate that this will be the, the difference Absolutely. in our bus contract, and so that's a comfortable amount that we know Correct. we're going to be able to to move. And we did share that with the town manager, Excellent. Okay. so he is aware. Okay. Well, let's try to be go in order. Are you? Um, I'll start with you, Jim. I mean, I'm comfortable. No, no questions. I feel like everybody has done. I mean, I unfortunately couldn't be there Monday night to hear the conversations, but the the transportation piece is huge. And as Dr. McLeod mentioned, I, I, actually, I feel like programs have already actually been cut to some extent. So there's just yeah, unless folks are willing to sacrifice the education that their students are getting in the Hopkinton Public Schools, there's nowhere to go. So, I mean, yay for transportation, but, <laughs> but you know. <laughs> All right, so, so that's really my only comments on that so far. I, I feel like we, you know, it's, it is what it is. Do you have anything, Michael? No, I mean, I, it's a tough year. Um, I think that we've done the best at this point we can and if we have to look further we will down the road but it seems I agree premature to try to talk about cutting other things. Okay. Yeah, I agree. John, do you have any questions or comments? Um I I 
Dr. McLeod said, I don't think there's more, I mean, I don't know if there's a lot more we can do with this. Okay. So I don't have any questions. Okay, thank you. I, I, we only got a couple words, but I think that what you said was you agree with Dr. McLeod that there's not, not a lot more that we can do at this moment. Okay. All right. Nina, did you, Nina, did you have any questions? Um, the way I heard uh, Ms. Rothamish was that this is the, uh, you know, there is more work that is possible. Is, is, did I hear that right? If we get further direction from the town, but the, the town is really still working on all, pulling together all the department numbers and all of the revenue numbers. So until that is completely finalized, there are still some changes. Um, we just received the governor's budget uh, last week. So all of these factors need to be um, put together before we have a, a comfortable number from the town manager again. Okay, thank you. Anything else? No. Thank okay. Um, well, before I turn it over to appropriations, I'll just say, I mean, I think it's, you know, in any year we would reduce the amount of our budget by this bus contract with this change anyway, and certainly this year is not any different, but um, I do agree, and I, and I have shared, I spoke with the chair of the Board of Selectmen today to let him know what we would be talking about, and I shared with him the good news about our bus contract and, and said again that, you know, this is now our third round of reductions and so that um, we understood that there was still a lot in flux on the town side and would be ready, you know, to hear the next steps in the process at our meeting next Thursday. Um, and I think as you pointed out, uh, Susan, it, at that point, um, the next thing for us to look at might be postponing some of these capital budget requests, particularly ones that are in pay as you go, because that would free up some cash that could be repurposed in other places um, in the operating budget, like maybe paying the debt service or something like that. That's obviously not our decision to make, but that would still be, it would help the bottom line whether it came out directly out of our operating budget or not. So um, that would be my, rec my personal preference in terms of what we look at next before we start to um, impact programs any further. Um, you know, and I don't know yet if that's gonna be necessary. I think none of us know that today. Um, I think that's gonna still be ongoing, but I definitely wanna make sure if you um, do have questions or suggestions, comments, whatever, that you get some air time to. Um, one question I have, um, Susan, I know that throughout this budget process you've been making cuts and you've been finding savings. And I don't know if, you, if there's any way that we can see exactly where those were. I mean, we've got all the detailed presentations from hearing all the departments um, come forward. But if, if you've been tracking that, and I, even if you just wanted to send updated documents, I'm just curious as to where the cuts are that, that you've made. Um, yeah, one of the slide presentations we did have um, – the cuts from when the the schools made their presentation to the different budgets. So we can reshare that presentation so with that you. So that was very high level though. I'm just, cause you know, I'm willing to go through, you know, school by school and department by department to see areas where I think there might be room for further reductions, but I wanna make sure that you haven't already done that. Um, so that's what I'm asking for. I don't know, I don't think I have a good idea of what driving these budget numbers now that's been updated since this so think about it <laughs> well, I don't want to put an undue burden on you either I know you've got a lot you're doing right now um, but I'd be curious because I do personally still think that I know you're waiting to hear what the the amount is but it's a very high increase still mm -hmm. and I just I hate to say okay well we can spend this much money so we're going to and if you can you know look a little harder and I, I understand you have been doing that but um, it just seems still to me really high and so I would you know as I said I'm, I'm more than willing to go through and, and take a look at things as well um, for potentials um, just because you know I know that in a year like this where there are blips in different areas whether it's special education or other things maybe that means you can't introduce all the programs that you would hope to maybe we need to delay those for a year um, when you're not in such a crazy you know year of changes, of, you know, increases that you really can't control. So just throw that out there. I don't think we're adding any new programs. No, no. I think the only new, the only thing that's being added is staff to support enrollment 
plus the, the well ELL is staff too but right. I don't think we're I don't think there's a new initiative I, honestly even in our strategic plan I don't even think that that's a cut that we've made this wasn't a year where we were you know there's no full decay year or co-teaching year or it wasn't a year where we had a big initiative at least fortunately mm -hmm. um, the this year because of the unexpected um, challenges in all these other yeah. areas but if, if I may yes give it a, a couple of examples it's a really great question and I know the lens that you're wearing now and I know you used to wear you used to sit on school committee um, but if you look at the page that shows personnel reduction and personnel increase mm -hmm. um, an example that I can give you that that may be helpful is when you look at the um, first this personnel reduction 1.8 FTE SPED so without going into details in terms of who that was and where that was and what it meant, you also see under personnel increase a grade 2 to 5 SPED coach, 1.0. If we are, right, that SPED coach and the reason we funded basically that position by reducing the other mm -hmm. was because of the philosophy of providing additional skills to teachers through coaching as opposed to sending students down the hall to an expert, mm -hmm. right? right? And this idea of coaching, which is something that we've been doing with reading as well, um, is a da daily professional development that's available to teachers as needed, mm -hmm. right? And so when we are asked, and I will give you another example that jumps out, um, well, two others that jump out. One is the um, adjustment counselor at the Elmwood School, a 0.5, um, and then the full-time adjustment counselor in the START program, that's a program that we have, uh, it was grant funded for the past three years. Mm -hmm. right. um, so if asked to reduce positions, if I use that as an example, we would be removing a program, if that were, were to be the choice, that has been, um, you know, shown to be really of value, and 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 would the, it's reducing it. The, the loss would be really felt. But also, I guess I would argue that without that sped coach, then I'm going to need that 1.8 sped teachers back. Mm -hmm. So that's the kind of give and take that you'll see in our. And even though um, Rebecca, I know that you provided a really thorough analysis of the class size at the center school, really thorough. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, looking at that and looking at the trends of how many kids will actually turn up, these five FTEs reductions that you see on this page for the center school were all paraprofessional positions. And so, again, philosophical, right, change to providing one paraprofessional for every two classrooms, where up until now, in, in, with larger class size, it had been one paraprofessional um, for every classroom teacher. So even though at the get-go it feels like, well, bumping up to 18 in a class isn't so bad, well, no, it's not if that's the beginning of the year, but if it gets to 20 and we're sharing a para, then I would argue that that really would have an impact on it, on the, edu on the instructional program and the ways in which our kindergarten teach all day long, right, in mm -hmm. centers. So it's so, and I know, and not telling you anything because I know you've sat on, on the school committee for years and years, but it's not as easy as being able to, you know, provide the, those decisions because they were tied to other decisions along the way. Well, that's a nice clarification. Thank yeah. you. Mm -hmm. Do you have questions, Yeah, first, a uh, couple of comments. First, I think it's really good news that with the bus contract getting initialized, that was a big uh, driver in the budget, so it's good that you got a, a good, ne negotiated a reasonable contract there. Um, I also want to reiterate what um, Rebecca just said regarding the overall picture. We're at this point in the budget where, you know, just a little update, you know, for this joint discussion we had on Monday, that currently as the budget stands, um, we're at uh, 2.6 million dollars over the budget where we would require an operational override, budget override, and we don't want to have to go there. Um, again, and even if we didn't do anything, that's a 9.3 percent increase to the taxpayers. That's a tax impact, and that's very high. Um, the point I'd like to make here is that, a as you said, um, 
the exact number, whether it's 2.5, that's going to change. The, the, you know, Norman Kamalo, the town manager, is working on really getting a precise number there because as we're talking right here, every, you know, not a million dollars, but every dollar really means a lot if we don't have to do an override. And I think that number is going to change a little bit, but it won't change the fact that right now we're facing over a 9% increase, and that, that's a number the Board of Selectmen are going to want to see reduced. So, and uh, right now that the request was from the school, for the school committee was about a decrease of $1.5 million, at least. Was that what, no. No, it wasn't. Was it? I, I might, yeah, I mean, we were looking at my notes. Um, that, was, but, that was a number that got thrown out in a conversation that there was never any consensus around. So, right. I, I think um, the town manager had about a week to solidify what the real numbers are. Right. But, yeah, the point I was going to, as Rebecca was saying, that it would be nice to know the budget that was, pres the school budget that was presented that's in that model for the budget right now and the how we're dropping that budget like you found the you know the, the bus contract is right. down or I was looking at the capital expenditures you took out a few of the items there that that counts too especially if it's pay as you go right I do have a question when you're talking about the turf fields that's a bonding over a period of time so the savings I mean you can mm -hmm. do the cut the math on the savings what is it going to be in the 2019 budget you know, in terms of the debt, I don't know what they were planning to do for borrowing for the turf fields, but that's the piece that you can, you know, it can be reduced by, not the entire amount, right, because exactly. that's not pay as you go. Exactly. But it is going to be a difficult budget season, if, even if we, the, um, the levy capacity changes, that we don't need an override, but the, the Board of Selectmen are kind of trying to figure out what's, a, what's the increase, whether it's 9%, 7% is even very, we haven't had a 7% increase in probably 15, you know, 15 years in this town. So that's why these numbers are shocking and right. that we're, everyone's working hard to try and reduce it. But again, at this point, my comment would be to, you're going to have to show what the decrease is or what the target eventually will be. I think we'll find out in, in a week, hopefully in a week, because everything's coming up pretty quick. Yeah, no, I agree. I mean, and, and that's kind of where we are, waiting to understand better what the target is. Because, I, I mean, my, you know, my understanding from that conversation on Monday was that the number wouldn't get worse than the 2.6 or $2.7 million number, but there was a lot of room for optimism um, based on the governor's budget that hadn't been factored in yet and some, um, some uh, relook that needed to happen about, particularly about the debt service, which is a really, really high number. Um, and so, you know, I think we just, before we do something further that would impact programs, we just want to make sure we really know what number we're dealing with. And I know, you know, it's my understanding as well that they were going to have conversations with the town departments um, to look at those budgets a little bit more closely, which, you know, this is sort of where we're a little bit ahead in our process um, because we have the earlier deadline to vote our budget. So we've kind of already done that. So, um, so again, I'll just reiterate what we said at that meeting, which is we're absolutely willing to do our part. We're just sort of waiting till everybody is sort of caught up to the same place and we have a little bit more clarity around what that number is because any time in the past that we've had to reduce a program, you know, it causes a lot of um, upset and panic in the community. So we don't, that's not something that we want to throw out there capriciously um, and then have and then change or go back on so mm -hmm. not unwilling to do it just needing more information is is sort of where I am right now and I, I that's what I communicated today to mm -hmm. the chair of the board of selectmen he seemed to understand that and that, and that was kind of what we said on Monday I think as well okay. so um, so I think we're going to spend spending a lot more time together this month <laughs> than <laughs> typically we're all done by this point um, but yeah, was there any other anything else? No, that's. I just wanted to bring up. That's probably why we're going to be here in the next weeks or month. Just yeah. uh, that we're looking, we're getting direction from the board of selectmen on what what their their goal, or their target is for the, the budget. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. No, excellent. And we're happy, you know, as we get as we continue to work together <coughs> over the upcoming weeks. Happy to provide more detailed information in any specific budget area that would be helpful. Mm -hmm. All right, well, thank you. I think we're ready to move on from this. We're not going to take any action, but we have at least some good news. So that's good. Um, 
Okay, so let's go back to new business. And item A under new business is our middle school football pilot program. So Ms. King is Once here again, to join Ms. us. King. <laughs> Once with another, again, another, with free another wonderful program. idea. <laughs> it doesn't cost anything. So I, I feel the need to say <laughs> it's that. It's important to say that right up front. <laughs> On the heels of, of those questions. So um, thanks so much for having me here tonight um, to talk a little bit about um, this program. And um, this has been, this uh, the idea of a middle school football program has been something that Prior to even my, my role in the athletic department, I had just heard swirling around. A lot of people were always asking about it, wondering about it. Um, and specifically in our school, we do have a lot of middle school athletic programs. I, I was a little surprised just in general that we didn't have one, but at the same time, um, to get a program up and running is definitely, it requires some work from a lot of different people. Um, and I think what happened is that this this year, um, I guess last year, but then really this year, some of the wheels got put into motion in terms of some people investigating it in a um, in a really genuine way. So, um, our varsity football coach Jim Gerard, along with one of our um, sub varsity coaches Mike Webb, had really been talking about it and why it would be such a valuable athletic offering at the middle school level, um, and so. Specifically with football, it's such a technique-based sport. Um, you know, certainly some student athletes can come in and be really athletic and, and be fast and all these different things, but all the technique involved in football is something that to do it really well requires training at a young age. Um, and, and as you know, there's so many different risks of injury and concussion and all these things, but there's research that shows when technique is taught properly at a young age, mm. those things are reduced, actually. Um, and so in talking with Jim over the past few years, he had said, you know, how much of the, they are teaching such basics at the freshman level that, you know, and, and they'll do it and they'll certainly sacrifice maybe putting in more intricate plays and different things to teach the fundamentals of football. But because we have not had a really solid youth program in town, there just doesn't, the opportunity hasn't existed to do that. And at this point, um, with the numbers they have had at the youth level, they're no longer running the seventh and eighth grade football program. So there's no option in town for um, young student athletes to participate in football. Um, and there's a lot of different reasons for that, I think. Um, I think that this is just, I will go on, you know, chatter that I hear on sidelines and things, but I think parents are looking for, um, convenience, understandably. I'm, I'm one of them in a lot of different ways, but um, the practice times could were difficult with some of the youth, um, the in-town programs, and continuity of coaching. Um, you know, you're relying on parent volunteers who are doing s s donating so much of their time, but when you get to the high school, there wasn't necessarily a connectedness. Um, so there were, were, there were a lot of different sort of questions up in the air that, you know, in putting together this proposal that Coach Gerard Coach Webb and myself really tried to answer. And I think what was, what I really appreciated was some work on the back end that Coach Gerard did in working with the coordinators of the youth program, um, who, you know, no one wanted to step on any toes and try and take away from what they were doing, but also knowing that their numbers were low for this particular age group. Um, Coach worked with them to say, is this something that if, if ever were to be, you would support? And they were so receptive to the idea, which I thought was great and willing to help and I'll talk in a couple minutes just about equipment and things like that, but just really receptive. So I was I was really appreciative of um, Coach having built those relationships with people to make sure that this is something that, um, you know, hopefully our student athletes would be excited about and, and want to participate in, but also that from a community standpoint that we, we covered all our bases to make sure that this was something that hopefully people could feel good about if it was something that was approved. So... Um, I think that, you know, beyond having an additional athletic offering in the fall, which is when we have the highest um, number of student-athlete participants at the middle school level, uh, it also provides an opportunity for young student-athletes who are interested in football to really learn the basic fundamentals. Um, and to have a coach in our program who's actually, I think, sad because he's really good at it and loves it, but willing to go to the middle school level and invest his expertise for um, student athletes of that age group just shows 
the value that I think the coaching staff is placing on a middle school program and the investment that, that people would have in it. So um, that's just a little bit of the background on it. And I had preemptively met with Dr. McLeod just to talk a little bit about the idea. Um, and we had put, obviously, the pilot program in place uh, officially a couple years ago. So it was nice to have that guideline to follow in mm -hmm. terms of procedure. Um, and so, you know, the idea was the idea was brought. And so in our investigation period, what we did was sent out surveys to our current sixth and seventh grade students who would next year be our seventh and eighth grade students along with the parent population of those two grades to gauge interest level um, and so in the in the you have in your packet um, the little write-up but um, what I thought was 58 students responded that they were interested in um, that I thought was really cool within two grades to show that level of interest but you also need parent permission to participate in any sport. And I know sometimes football has some reservations for some people. Um, but 37 parents responded that, yes, my um, son or daughter would be interested in participating in football, which I thought I was, I was pleasantly surprised by that number. Um, and, it, and I thought what was also really cool was that I took off the parents who said yes, but my son or daughter wouldn't play, just really excited about the potential of it so that we actually got the number that would potentially participate. Um, and knowing that that might not be an actual number, but a pretty good indicator and thinking we'd probably get a little bit less, really you need about 20 um, student athletes to run a football program at the sub-varsity level. Um, so thinking that there were 37 respondents that said yes was, was pretty exciting because we said, okay, so from a number standpoint, it's viable. Um, so in the interim, we worked on putting together just some of the budget numbers. Um, and so some of these are certainly pending, because I know we had obviously discussed the um, $200 user fee. Um, and if that is officially approved, then the pilot program user fee would end up being $300. Um, you know, because it was something that we had doubled it in the past, but it seemed to have a cost of... This is just a proposal, so I'm certainly open to feedback if this goes through, but to double $200, $400 seemed really high, so we would be asking maybe for an exception on that. But with the numbers we ran, we'd still be able to run the program with, at, with no cost to the school, um, no additional cost. So that was, that was um, from a number standpoint, just the user fee part of it. And this would cover transportation, officials payments, coaching stipend. Uniforms would be covered by the hand-me-downs from the current varsity program. Um, and as is stated in the um, guidelines for the pilot program, students would be responsible for purchasing their own equipment. Um, but with donations that are being made from the uh, Ashland Youth Football Program, along with the fun, um, potential fundraising ability with the high school football program, we felt confident that we would be able to provide equipment if any student, athlete, or family was in need. Um, because football equipment is, um, I would say, one of the sports, the equipment is not cheap. You know, um, not that other things are cheap, but you're not just buying a pair of cleats. You know, have a, a helmet and shoulder pads and things like that. Um, can be a little bit costly, but, you know, we wanted to make sure that we had ample um, funds and the donation of supplies in the event that there were students in need. Um, so we also met to talk about just the lo logistics of fields and practicing and those kinds of things. And um, without boring you with all those details, we did come up with what we thought was a really good logistical plan that worked around the um, games at the freshman JV level, practicing game schedule we felt would be really flexible and certainly um, the football team uses pretty much predominantly the same fields all the time, so they would really, if they needed time, they'd really be only borrowing from each other, um, and so they wouldn't necessarily be impacting any other program or team, and so that, that I think would provide nice opportunity if there were some days where we needed to, you know, be together for programs to learn from each other, observe. So um, that's, again, a little bit of the numbers in the background, but if you look on the budget proposal part of it, um, I, I was proposing having two coaches for football just for a number of reasons. One, from a supervision standpoint, but also you have a defensive and offensive coach, so there's a lot of schematic things where you would want two people. Um, and we were also, in addition to having two coaches, 
um, who are getting the uh, stipend, also a volunteer coach um, who's already volunteered um, his time, who's on our, our varsity staff but is retiring. So pretty, pretty cool there. Um, coach Webb preliminarily went to a league meeting. There is a middle school league. Um, and pending school committee approval, the, the league did say they would accept us in if if it is this becomes viable. Um, and it was all neighboring towns, easy easy transportation, um, and just a real a lot of them are Tri Valley League teams already. So which is a nice thing. Um, as and there's no no fee to join the league, which I think just a quick note on that. Um, that's really cool because a lot of times there's fees for these types of leagues because of the scheduling and this and that. And the people who are in charge of it and coordinating it are in it just because they really want to support developmental sports at a at the youth level, which I think is it's just a testament to to the program that they're running. Um, so equipment is uh, again, would students would respond would assume responsibility, <coughs> but um, I did a TBD because if anything needed to be purchased, it would be um, covered by some fundraising. Um, I noticed a, a quick typo, so I apologize for this on transportation. It actually should be $1,600, not um, $1,200, but that still doesn't, it, there's still a surplus um, with that number. Um, so <clears throat> if you do the math, and I assumed 25 participants, knowing that 37 might be a little bit high, and that's, you know, we did the math there. Um, which would result in $7,500. Um, and with the difference of the 400 I mentioned, there would be a surplus of $900 there. Um, if we were to have more students participate, obviously the surplus goes up. Um, so, so that would be what we would be looking at um, in terms of this year running it, and then knowing that it would be a two-year pilot program. Um, I tried to project out the budget implications for the district. Um, and with two coaches on a you know salary, seven units at step five, um, you know the, the, all the numbers we put in there. Um, so it would be you know the I think the total cost after user fees would end up probably you know obviously there'll be some increase and that bus number would need to go up a little bit. So I would honestly say that number is probably more around sixty three hundred dollars or something like that. Um, so that would be after two years. So numbers-wise, to run a football program, that's really pretty pretty good. And I think that the benefits would be, you know, I guess the proof would be in the pudding in how two years goes. And if, if approved, it would need to certainly be reevaluated in terms of viability and term being adopted into the budget. But um, but the interest and support that we've had just in this preliminary phase, it's been it's been really it's been really nice actually to see it. Um, and I know some of the questions that have been asked, why football and not another program? And for me, the simple answer is that people brought this as an idea and wanted it to be investigated. And at this point, whenever anyone's brought an idea, I've investigated it, and there are some that haven't come to this table because they haven't panned out in a way that felt like, you know what, we have enough to back mm -hmm. this. Um, so I think that's important to note um, that, you know, that has happened, and, and it's not because we wouldn't want to support it, but just we didn't have what we needed to, I thought, move forward with it. So um, that's sort of the summary, and I'm guessing there might be some questions, which I'm happy to answer, but hopefully that helped give some background as to where where the idea came from and sort of where we're at in terms of potential planning. Thank you. Do you want to start? Do you have a question? I mean, yeah, that was like the most incredibly thorough investigation of a potential <laughs> program I've ever heard. Yeah, exactly. I mean, so. <laughs> um, For a non-research person, I appreciate that. That was pretty solid. <laughs> pretty solid. And and the, the question that I had that you answered, but I think is an important one to sort of reiterate, is that, um, you know, the town program, I know that sometimes with the younger kids, it's tricky. Yeah. They, d they don't have enough to field a team yep. or they combine with another town. Yep. Um, so as they get a little older and they get a little bit more into the sport, mm -hmm. um, I think, like you said, it, it, he's already spoken to the town yes. league, yep. and, he, and, and yep. so I think if you've got enough kids mm -hmm. and they can't make it work yeah. on that side of things, why not mm -hmm. bring it to the schools, especially as you said, if it's not going to cost yeah. anything, it's just time and, yeah. and energy. So, yeah. I mean, if, if there are kids that want to play and we can make it happen, right? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.
So I, I also appreciate the thoroughness. The one thing that jumped at me that you actually answered in your presentation, and I, I actually had spoken with Dr. McLeod about, was the association with football and concussion. And I love the idea that bringing the skills level down a little bit would mm -hmm. help potentially reduce concussion, concussions among our athletes. So I, mm -hmm. I love that. The one question I had is, would this potentially be a cut sport? Um, because of, no. Okay. Great question. It would not be a cut sport. Okay. Football as a whole is not a cut sport at the high school either. Um, and that, again, is, a, I think, a nice part of it because we do have, in the fall, um, we do have four cut sports. Um, and then also cross country, which is not a cut sport. And it provides an option for students who are genuinely interested in playing football as their number one, but also if they were to get cut from another sport, another option to um, be on a team that maybe has a different dynamic than a cross country. So would they take players then that had never played football before? Then? Oh, yeah. Is that, okay. Oh, absolutely. We have freshmen that have never played football before, um, and they teach them from ground zero, which they're more than willing to do, and they'll always do, because inevitably that will probably always happen. But having a, you know, I guess what we would call a feeder program would just allow for s those fundamentals to be more instilled in, in a, I guess, a larger group. Um, and I actually talked at length with Coach Webb just about, you know, because I'm curious, obviously, with safety, concussions, and when you look at the, the younger level, just, I said, talk me through what your preseason would look like. Um, longer time without full equipment, meaning no tackling, things like that. So really, really technique-based, um, which I wanted but was excited to hear that I didn't even need to ask for, that that was the mentality that they were going in with. That's great. Um, John, did you have any questions? I'm not sure. We he, we might have lost John. Oh, he yep. had a nine o'clock flight. Oh, oh, here, oh, here you are. Yeah. No, he texted me that he had lost the feed, but you're back. Running down. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Ways of the you're right running now, through somewhere. the airport, <laughs> leaping over uh, chairs. I, I, no, I did. I did. I did. I did text him when I went through. Oh. Are you? Are you <laughs> uh, did you have any questions about the pilot football program? Um, I, I don't have too many questions. Um, I, I do just want to be well researched because I had a lot of questions. <laughs> they were all answered. So I um, <laughs> mm -hmm. appreciate the, the work that we did and especially the point about the technique impact and trying to teach this with younger ages. Did you hear that? He was complimenting your research skills and your presentation because he did have a lot of questions that you answered. Oh, okay, great. All right, um, Mina, did you have anything? I, I do. Go ahead. The first thing I want to say, um, there is a, are you able to hear me fine? Kind of. Every few words. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the first thing I want to say is I really appreciate uh, Miss King's passion and all the research and your presentation excellent. Uh, we did some back and forth on all the programs that have been offered and you know, she shared. At the middle school, we have soccer, volleyball, hockey, cross country, um, and a couple of other things to uh, spring the uh, sports. So it's exciting that you know, she took the feedback from uh, this group of people and further. So the question I have, as I understand, is that along with football, cheerleading is something that goes hand in hand. Cheerleading, I think she said. Is there any thought around that that you put in? Well, is that something that, at, you, right. uh, you know, close by the town? Well, right now we're just focusing on the football because that's the only thing on the agenda tonight. So unless that okay, impacts I was just wondering if that was also something that came up because they do go hand in hand as I understand. Well, I don't think they're I don't think it's required. I think we're just let's focus on the football pilot for tonight. Okay, that's fine. Um, I did have a couple of other questions. Um, when we are piloting, I understand that you're looking at the thing that great. Um, I was wondering if you consider a broader uh, survey of who's going to come back up. I, I can't, we didn't understand your question. Can you try again? Sure. My question is the survey. 
Yeah, can you can you just call can you just tell, tell her I'm calling? All right, Doctor McLeod's going to call you because we can't understand your questions. Okay. And put her on, just put her on speakerphone. Yeah. yeah. Okay, she'll put you on speakerphone. So I'm going to mute my laptop. There we go. Sorry. Um, yeah, okay. So try again, Mina. Thank you. Um, my question was around the survey. The survey, okay. The grade? What? I was in broader than a certain grade level. I can't, read on the can, screen. Can you, you know what, Mina? Can you type your comment, Hi, Mina? On right on the screen. Yeah, there's a little place where you can type. Yeah, we can't hear you on the phone either. Okay. There's a lot of feedback. If you can type it. Uh, there you go. So, I know. Even on the phone, yeah. there's a lot of feedback. That's where I'm doing. Uh, well, where is okay, it going to so show up? It should be down here. Is it because While she's typing, maybe big? this is her question. No. Is it just seventh and eighth grade? I think, right? Yeah. Okay. Yes. So sixth grade is not involved. Because there's so there's that's, discussion. That's who's eligible. She has to post it first. That's who's, yeah. But also, um, so there still would be. I believe fifth. Could the survey? Okay. Here's okay. the question: The survey would it be broader? Apply to say kids coming from Hopkins? No, they're not eligible for this program. <laughs> the, the, so it wasn't sent out to Hopkins families as they weren't eligible for the program and we wanted to gauge interest in the preliminary year of it um, the other piece of it and I say this you know so respectfully but I think at, sometimes when you're at elementary school you're not understand like I feel like people might have responded to this thinking it was youth football yeah and not necessarily a middle school team um, I know as a parent of young ones I'm confused and I'm in athletics sometimes when I'm trying to figure it out for my own kids but also um, there are for I don't know if you're talking necessarily about viability for the future, but obviously next year it wouldn't be it wouldn't be relevant um, because number one we will have those age levels at, as a youth program in town, but also there's a weight limit um, or weight minimum. Um, but also that's yeah. part of why it's a pilot, so we right. will assess that going forward yep. before it's adopted as a full program. But those students aren't eligible for the pilot, so there wouldn't be any benefit to right. having sent the survey to them. So the the weight minimum, yeah. I, is there I would assume would help would knock out sixth graders anyway. Because okay. we keep a lot of them because the size well, so of sixth and an eighth graders. Screen. So okay. interestingly, the so the weight situation is actually um, at in the youth football program. Some sixth graders actually um, weigh out of it, so then they end up not being eligible too. So. There, some schools have discussed um, having exceptions for sixth grade for sixth grade students who actually um, exceed the maximum weight of the youth program because then they're in this interim year. Um, as a whole, I mean, it's hard to know the exact physical <laughs> stature of, of all students. Um, and I, you know, we do have situations in wrestling where we have students who don't meet the minimum age, minimum weight requirements at, even at the middle school level, and therefore they're only practicing, and it's a it's a completely different differently structured practice to accommodate for that difference. Whereas whereas it is a physical sport, we always want to ensure the safety. So, would there be a cap on the other end for like? Eighth graders are super tall, or okay. No, which is why they usually try to protect it at the smaller. Yeah. Sure, mm -hmm. okay. makes sense on the smaller. Right? The other question she has is regarding safety. There's so much conversation around football and concussion, especially coming from the workshop she attended, and then it just went off the screen, so I can't read it. But I think you already addressed that in your remarks. Um, yep. In terms of that's part of the reason that it's beneficial to start earlier and, and teach them. And obviously, they're all responsible for their own helmets, which are yep. Yep. Um, so okay. All right. Well, I don't see any more questions um, on the screen, so um, I would just say, you know, I thought this was really well done. You know, and again, just as a reminder to everybody, this pilot um, 
policy is something that we put in place maybe two years ago, Dr. McLeod, two or three years ago. Yeah. So we've tried it with hockey. We've tried it with ski. Um, we will follow it closely as it goes along. And I know you already roughed out the 2021 budget implications. And obviously, these we're not going to hold you to these because we'll evaluate at the time we actually have to make a decision um, what the impact looks like. But I, I think, again, I just I want to compliment you for listening to people and taking their suggestions seriously, spending so much time investigating. Obviously, the coaching staff um, being willing to try this out and putting the energy into it. All of these things are just great opportunities for the kids. Um, you know, it's great to keep them engaged and busy and active, and um, you know, and with each other. So thank you very much for doing that. I think unless anybody else has any other questions, we're ready to vote um, on, uh, I lost my train of thought. <laughs> I think I'm just looking, a, on a, right? yeah, I think I'm just looking for a motion to approve a pilot middle school football program beginning in fall um, of 2017. 2018. Of 2018, <clears throat> my bad. <laughs> So, yeah. moved. so moved, yes. Okay, oh, John, John Did moved. he beat me too? Yes, right. and a well, second. Well played, John. I'll second it then. <laughs> a second. <laughs> I'll give that to Jen. Um, and then we'll vote by roll call. So, John, yeah. Mina. Abstain. Okay, I'm a yes. I'm a yes. I'm also yes. Okay, so that is um, approved. So, congratulations. Thank you very much. Thank you all so much. Can I just uh, say, I did not give this as a recognition at the beginning because Miss King was not here, but she was at a swim meet until 10 o'clock last night for oh. the high school administration. And just your presence on, across all the sports is really commendable late at night, and here you are again at night with us. So just thank want you. to say thank you oh, for thank all you your so much. commitment to our sports Thank you to all students. of you. You're here late, too. Yeah. And you were there last night until <laughs> that time as well. So Let me pile on to that, that it was <laughs> – it was Ms. King's pilot program proposal that we're taking up tonight, right? This is something when Jean was saying two or three years ago, and I'm thinking to my head, well, it couldn't have been three years ago. Oh, is that right? Yeah. 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 So, no, efforts. you brought but, – But really, I think what a great idea because it was – with the ski program, it was a program that people were really passionate about, but it gave the community, the school committee, thinking about budget – the opportunity to evaluate whether or not this is something um, that that they want to include, you know, um, in their budget going forward. So, thank well, you. And it makes us. I think it makes it easy for us to le level the playing field. To pardon the athletic pun, but when it doesn't That's cost good. us anything up front, then when we have a ridiculous year like this one, you know, <laughs> you can as opposed to another year which is more comfortable for us in terms of a budget, it doesn't affect the kids and I, I so yeah I mean I think yeah. as well that's that's been a great um, a great new model and it's allowed us to offer some opportunities to kids that we probably we wouldn't be having this conversation right now I could tell you that so we um, wouldn't and we look at the number of kids that are in cross country or is it cross country at the middle school right yes I mean they are looking for opportunities to get physically active yes um and they so are. it's it's exciting yeah. yeah no i think this is great thank great. you so thank much thank you all so thank much you. you're, really you're welcome to stay for the rest of the night if you like right but good night <laughs> thanks d thank, thank you. you got a meet to go to <laughs> got a meet to go to now no okay not tonight okay um all right so next is our school bus contract um are you going to lead us through this? We'll no. turn it. We'll okay. Turn it right over. <laughs> Happily. Turn we, it right down. We've had a lot of um, conversation about our bus contract. Um, we put it out early intentionally so that we would have a really more solid number um, for the budget process, which is, which is very helpful for us going forward. Um, so our current vendor, uh, Michael Connolly, we had five vendors ask for the bids, as is the current status across the state we only have one vendor who actually gives us a bid and um, you hear a lot of discussion about that that's not unique to Hopkinton that happens in every community every school district across the state so um, that said Connolly came back originally with a very high number because we only had the one bidder um, we're allowed to negotiate with that one bidder 
And in doing that, we were able to bring the costs back down with um, some changes that were both acceptable to um, Connolly and, and to us. So it uh, was an agreeable situation, which brought us down to a better number for our budget. So I'm happy to say that we're back down to approximately what we had budgeted. And I would recommend that we accept the bid. Great. And I would echo that recommendation. Okay. Does anybody have questions about the bus contract? No. John, any That's questions? Any nope, I'm good. Okay, Mina, did you have any questions? I do, um, again, um, one question that I have. Okay, Chia, one and one. Can you type it, please? She wanted to know what how many are other tier ones? one, two, and three buses. Those are our bus route. We, yep. you know, the tier one is the middle school, high school. Tier two is Hopkins, and tier three is Center and Elmwood. Right. So it's the combination. Um, if a bus is only going. Uh, to and from in the morning in the afternoon, say for instance, to the middle school, high school, then it's only considered one tier. But if they're picking up Elmwood Center, Hopkins, middle school, high school, that's your three tiers. Okay, any other questions? Uh, congratulations to you for a successful negotiation. Yes. <laughs> okay. So um, I think we're ready for a vote. Do we need to authorize anyone to sign it? Do you sign it? I or sign it. Do we authorize you to do that as part of our motion? You may. Okay. Um, so I'm looking for a motion to approve the school bus contract and bus, tra excuse me, transportation contract with Michael J. Connolly and Sons as presented and to authorize Ms. Rothermick to sign on behalf of the district. So moved. Okay, and a second? I'll second. Okay, so that's a motion by Ms. Cavanaugh, a second by Ms. Devlin. John? Yes. Mina? Yes. I'm a yes, Nancy? Yes. And Jen? Yes. Okay, so Thank that you. is unanimous, and the kids can get to school next year. Thank you very <laughs> much for all your work on that. That's exactly. wonderful. Okay, so next up is budget transfers. Are we turning this right? Keeping her right busy over tonight, aren't we? Yep. <laughs> very good. Uh, so what you see are really a lot of them are really just our special education and trying to clean up some of the um, deficit accounts. And we're using in the first transfer, we had originally budgeted for a singleton route for a student, which was outside of the accept transportation. Um, but that student, no, we no longer needed that route. So that first one is transferring that budget amount that was for that singleton route to cover those um, costs that have gone over budget. And then the second one is, again, using our prepaid special education transportation and to cover those um, changes in our out-of-district needs. Okay. Very good. Does anybody have questions? No? No. John, any questions? He got on the He's still on. Nope. nope. And Mina, any questions? No. Okay. Um, so I am just looking for a motion to approve the budget transfers as outlined in the agenda materials. So moved. And a second? Second. Okay. So motion by Ms. Devil and a second by Ms. Mrs. Cavanaugh. Um, John? Yes. Mina? Yes. And I'm a yes. Nancy? I'm a yes. And Jen? Yes. Okay. So that is unanimous and um, all set. So now we will stop picking on you <laughs> for a while and um, we can move on to school committee policy. Do we want to take the other ones first? Because Mr. Ghosh is here. This one is so, so fast. fast. Okay. Or at least I'm assuming it's going to okay. be that I don't think he would mind. All right, that's policy. fine. The policy about policy. It policies. is the policy about the policy. And um, it's pretty straightforward. It really just says that the school committee will make sure that there is periodic 
review of their policies, and assuming that you still believe that that is to be, that is important, um, this policy itself has not been reviewed <laughs> since 2006. So it's really looking at whether or not you want to change any of the ways in which you review your policies. Um, they want to make sure that they are used consistently as a basis for school committee action and administrative decision. The committee should review it because of that. Um, we have shared this on listserv. I'm assuming you have not had a huge response. I have had zero responses to this. And I don't have anything more to say about that. <laughs> I do have one suggestion, which is that this last sentence, I think this policy is so old that I'm not sure the policies were all on the website at the time. Yeah. Because this seems oh. to imply that there is an actual physical notebook yeah. of them. Yeah. So I think maybe we need catch. to just Re change, remove it. either remove it or make make reference, maybe add a sentence that oh, um, manuals? updated policies will be posted to the website or something like that. But definitely we don't need that last sentence. Should you just nix the manuals and just say recall? Oh, never mind. We can't recall. <laughs> um, the, sup the school committee directs the superintendent to periodically update all, um, or not periodically. I mean, I think what's been important is that it be done regularly on a timely basis following review mm -hmm. so that, that all, all updated policy are posted to the district website in a timely fashion. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's good. Good. I will read it in one second. Okay. Okay. It would read, the school committee directs the superintendent I'm to periodically recall all policy comes out to post updated policies on the website in a, tam in a timely fa fashion. The school committee directs the superintendent to post all updated policies to the website in a timely fashion. Beautiful. Yep. Any other questions or suggestions? John, anything? No, this is pretty straightforward. Okay. Mina, did you have any questions or suggestions? No. Okay. Dare I say that we could vote this on the first reading? Um, I think we can. So I just need a motion to approve policy BGC as amended. So moved. Second. Okay, so a motion by Ms. Devlin, a second by Ms. Cavanaugh. Um, John? Yes. Mina? Yes. I'm a yes, Nancy? Yes. And Jen? Yes. Okay, so that's unanimous, and we've crossed one off our list. <coughs> okay, so moving on, we are on to old business. Item A, School Committee Policy, EHB, Electronic Records Retention. And we can invite yes. Mr. Ghosh up that to join wonderful. us. And I see him here. Thank you. Hello. Hi. Hi. Thank you for coming out so late. <laughs> we believe you. All right, now. <laughs> So following the last meeting, um, we met and went through your feedback with Mr. Ghosh and Megan. Um, and the, um, the blue font, I believe, that you see in the policy as presented tonight reflects the changes that you had recommended um, at the last meeting. Note in super large pink font, <laughs> the follow-up note, Ooh, yes. lest we forget mm -hmm. that even after 
approval, we one thing that we do need to remember to do, um, is particularly with this policy, is to update the student handbooks um, as it relates to web history. So I will have asked Mr. Ghosh to entertain any questions that you might have about the changes or about anything else that might have surfaced between the last time we spoke about the policy. Any questions? I, I felt like this was reflects exactly what we talked about. Mm -hmm. so. John, did you have any lingering questions or comments about the electronic records retention policy? I do not. Okay. I know. <laughs> Mina, did you have any questions? I'm all set. She's all set. She's all set. Okay. All right. Wow. Okay. I guess we are ready to, uh, I'm ready for a motion to approve policy EHB as amended. So moved. And, second. and sticking with our tradition, that's a motion <laughs> oh, no. by Ms. Devlin and a second by Ms. Cavanaugh. John? I'm just trying to make it easy for you. Yeah. Nina? Mina? Yes. Okay, I'm a yes, Nancy? Yes. And Jen? Yes. Okay, very good, one down. Excellent. So the next one is IJNDB Internet Acceptable Use. Similarly, um, you can see the changes and we've shared the changes that um, we discussed at the last meeting. However, in addition, Mr. Ghosh had a meeting um, and I with, well, I'll, I'll turn it over to you to yeah. talk about the social media guidelines. and. Yeah, I think the request and <coughs> best practice was the form of uh, uh, social media subcommittee, uh, which we did over the last couple of weeks, and then we met for the first time yesterday. And it's, a, it's a mixture of uh, administrators and teachers, uh, and some of the tech integration people. Uh, so we spent some time over the two-week period uh, remotely looking at the guidelines, and some people made some suggestions and edits. Then we met yesterday and kind of hopefully finalized some things, and um, so those uh, are available um, for you to see, and we are I'm welcome to answer any questions about the guidelines. Uh, in addition to the guideline, we decided to create a form um, for teachers to submit uh, requests. So if a teacher, for example, is going to uh, request that they have access to a social media site, uh, they will fill out this Google form uh, with their name, their information, uh, the sites they want to join. Uh, and if it's a classroom <laughs> site, that will tell us that we will most likely use their class um, uh, work-based email for that. Uh, whereas if it's a club or an extracurricular activity where they uh, may need uh, a separate email address made by the district, let's say it's soccer, JV soccer, we could have an email address made for that team, and then we would use that email address as their work email address for that particular sport. That way, we don't have a crossover between sports and their classroom uh, email address because we find often that some of the sites don't allow you to, to mix multiple emails or accounts. Uh, so that was one solution we came up with, meeting the various needs of the, uh, the, the staff and the employees uh, in the district. So that form kind of will be shared with us and we'll use that information to <clears throat> support teachers and also to help monitor some of the accounts that are created. And those are all part of the part of the original guidelines, um, and we did begin a little bit of uh, a discussion uh, last time we met about um, really uh, permissions around uh, uh, photos and and how that was going to work. And, and the best thing that we came up with was if there's a photo restriction on file, um, that would then be a trigger for us to to say that there should be no photos being used in any social media sites. And we're just trying to keep it clean cut. Mm -hmm. So um, it's either you're in or you're out for most part. So if you have a photo restriction on file uh, with the district, then we're not going to be using images um, in any social media sites. Even if it's in a, in a closed uh, classroom site where uh, some teachers invite you to a, uh, a group, uh, even within that group, we're going to say it without a photo uh, permission on file, we're not going to allow teachers to post to that private group even. Uh, so that's what we've uh, decided to do as, as of right now, and we're happy to entertain uh, feedback from all of you about that uh, suggestion. I think that's an excellent suggestion. Mm -hmm. okay. Better safe than sorry, I guess, yeah, for that. 
Um, okay. I don't even know if, if is this the place to review the guidelines or is that something that we kind of keep to the subcommittee and report back to you on eventually or is that something you'd like to do at this meeting? The guidelines are not part of the policy itself. So right. 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 Separate. Yeah, yeah separate. let's not do it tonight, okay. but I do think once you, you and the subcommittee feel like they're final, I think okay. it would be great to um, to bring it just because also it helps you making it more public so people are aware of it. But sure. yeah, but I think tonight probably not, especially okay. given our technical difficulties. <laughs> It'll be hard to have that conversation. Right. Um, so, all right, did anybody have any questions or further suggestions to the policy? Just a quick one. Um, last, the last meeting there was some conversation concerning, for example, teachers who live in town who um, have children who are in the school and mm -hmm. you know children who have friends who are also part of the school. Is that part of the policy or is that part of the guidelines that you're going to come up with? I know that's, that's a sticky subject. No, that's a good question and um, it's not, there's not anything in the um, policy I don't believe that says we can It's just, just, just teachers can't have contact via social media with s students Correct. which I, I'm all for but yes. I think it's tricky if you have a teacher who has a child who has friends Correct. who you might want to so in that keep an eye on via social media. My, my, so, <laughs> that is correct. So we, all, we have staff that, right. that have kids in the district, that live in the district, that also work in the district. Right. Um, and so um, I think based on even some discussion we had at the, the subcommittee meeting yesterday was that um, if, for example, you're, you're a parent but you also work in the district, that you are using a personal account. So with a personal account, let's say you have a personal Instagram account, and at, with that personal account, you choose to follow your, your kids or your kids' friends. That's on you and that's on your personal account. Um, so I think we want to draw the line that you're not cross or commingling accounts so that if you're having a work account and you have an Instagram going, that you're not friending or you know following uh, your, your kids uh, on that account. So I think that's one way I think we looked at uh, trying to separate it but not prohibit, you know, people that live in town from obviously communicating with right. people they know and care about. <laughs> and not to belabor the discussion, because I know you could go around in circles, but I think it's tricky because you you don't want to open up, say, well, you can talk to whatever, whoever you want to on your personal account because it is your personal account because I feel like you can't have students who are just, I don't want to say just students, but not personal friends of your children. I think it's a I mean, in, in your subcommittee, there's probably lots of conversations that are going to have to go on about it because it's a, sure. it doesn't seem clear-cut to me. Yeah. I, mm -hmm. I, I see what you're saying. You see what for, I mean? for example, yeah. I, it, one of my children does have, is friends with some people who are, work for the district. It would be different to me for her to be friended with them on their personal accounts right. than it would be for them to be friended by a teacher that we don't have a personal connection with. Correct. That's what yes. I mean. Yeah, Correct. exactly. And and that's I, how yeah, do, so how do that you that? It, and not because I'm worried account. about the, and not to be clear, not because I'm worried about the teacher so much as I think it's a blurry line for the district right. to yeah. Correct. have that. And because they, there's so much integration, <clears throat> right? Social media I, is, yeah. is designed to aggregate and connect and pull people together right. uh, across platforms and a, a number of sources. So. Um, I think there was a lot of discussion on that, and I think there's in the guidelines we're we're, na we're trying to dial that down, you know, even from the basics and the policy where we're kind of saying like you know you shouldn't be friending people. Also, even with you know work accounts, talking about like what you should and shouldn't follow with a work account, right? So, so we wanted to be people to be as neutral as possible when they're they're using uh, work accounts that are representing Hopkinton Public Schools and that they also have to be careful of what they're even choosing to follow and that they should really limit that uh, at all and, and be as neutral as possible. So there's some language in the guidelines that really lay out some of those, uh, those rules. Um, and I know, so we should really stick to the policy, but one, one thing that I'll just, if I assume you're already considering, but if you're not in, the, in terms of the guidelines, is just what are the parameters around use of your personal devices during the school day, um, you know, Obviously, teachers should be teaching and not being on Facebook, and I'm not implying that we have people doing that. But, um, but you know, so hopefully that's something that's getting addressed as well in the guidelines. Although none of it's really germane to the policy right. per se. So correct. Okay, so that's even though good. I think some gen there's some general language in the policy, I believe that kind of indicates that 
school networks are for are for school exactly for right school oh that's use. right i do remember so. that conversation from last time thank you so um okay the only thing in the policy itself it, i think we're under social networking where it says employees in blue and it says will not. There's a parentheses of current employees with a question mark. I don't think that's intended to be left there. Correct. I think that's so we'll um, take that question to be question. reviewed. Yeah. So we'll, we're deleting that parenthetical? Correct. I don't think that was just a question mark, I believe, okay. um, that we put in the last meeting to remind us to look at that as a reference. So I believe it should just say employees will not. Okay. <laughs> Is there anything else? Um, it's, oh, I don't know. I'm sorry. Sorry. John, Armina, did you have any questions or final comments? Oh, how about if I unmute you? You're good to go. Okay. Sorry, can you type that? I, I can't hear you. Yeah, I typed it. <laughs> it didn't come up on my screen. Um, can you text me your question? Sure. Um, so while Mina is doing that, um, I would ask the committee to consider bringing this back. Um, there were some questions from the teachers okay. associations, um, and I did tell them that we would not be voting, or I would okay. suggest okay. that we not vote okay. tonight. Okay. Good. Um, so we want to make sure that we give them enough chance to have their questions answered as it relates to policy. And um, once that has happened, then I will bring it back for a final reading. Is that okay? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So Mina is asking, were staff and students engaged in updates to the policy? So that's what Dr. McLeod, I think, was just saying, that um, the teachers had some questions. So we're not going to vote this tonight. Um, so that we have time to get the teachers questions answered. So we'll bring this back for a third reading at our next meeting Yeah, I see that you're raising your hand. I think she texted you. Yes, but I just oh, read sorry. what she texted me I didn't know if there was another not just... yet <laughs> She she cannot find IJNDBR3. No, we're just developing That's, it. Right, yeah. those are the guidelines that we're talking about developing, so those aren't finished or posted anywhere. Thank you. Okay. Okay, so we're not taking any action tonight. So other than the conversation that you're having with the teachers, we didn't have any other questions or concerns about this policy, right? So fair to say the ball is back in your court yes. and we will look forward to seeing you again <laughs> we'll, we'll put you on for me maybe, <laughs> maybe we'll, we'll put you on we'll we'll move you forward so you can go yeah. yeah you can go first next time and not have to come out so late um testing to see how much you enjoy it's That's right, right. <laughs> exactly is there anything I just, else? I did share just a recent update with all of you uh, on the committee, the uh, social media guidelines. So oh, based fantastic. on the updates as of um, from yesterday's meeting up through today, you should have a recent copy. Fantastic. Great. Thank you. Great. Thank you very much. So I think we're all set with that, and we're right, and yes. we're ready to move on to old business C, except board of directors. So I will turn this over to you, Dr. McLeod. Um, thank you, thank Mr. Thank you, Mr. Ghosh. Um, so there's, uh, this is really for consideration of a request and recommendation that you appoint Dr. Cavanaugh, your newly appointed to be superintendent, um, to serve on the board of directors for the except collaborative for the remainder of this current school year. Uh, she would be replacing me on that board. It will allow her the opportunity to get familiar with some of the other area superintendents. I have checked in with Dr. Kavanaugh, and she is willing to take on this responsibility. <laughs> and so it is on um, the agenda tonight for your vote. Great. Okay. Does anybody have any questions? No questions. No, no questions. John, did you have any questions? No. Mina? 
You're all She's set. Okay, very good. So um, I just need a motion to appoint Dr. Kavanaugh to the accept board of directors for the remainder of the 2017-2018 school year. So moved. And a second. Second. Okay, not breaking with tradition. Um, John? Yes. Mina? Yes. I'm a yes, Nancy? Yes. And Jen? Yes. Okay, so congratulations to you. Thank you. You're now a proud <laughs> member of the Accept Board of Directors. You can add that to your business cards. Mm -hmm. um, okay, and I so. I will share that with um, the director. Okay. Marsha Berkowitz, and Dr. Kavanaugh already has the dates. Duly noted, Excellent. Um, and so that will be all set. She, they will need a copy of the agenda that in which you okay. voted. So I will take care of that. Very good. Okay. Okay. So now we are at our second opportunity for public comment, but there is no one here. So unless any of you would like to comment, we can move along to items by consensus. And I would like to pull out. Um, item L, which were the minutes. There was something that I noticed in one of the sets of minutes and I didn't have a chance to send in my edits. So um, we can vote on items A through K unless, was there anybody that wanted to pull something else out? Nope. John or Mina, anything to pull out? Okay, then doc Just Dr. Some gracious gifts. I thought What's I that? Oh, some very yes. gracious gifts. I thought that oh, was fairly yes. nice. Oh, yes, very, so many. very yes. generous. Gifts, absolutely. And I'm glad I don't have to read them all, especially <laughs> tonight. Yes. So uh, the superintendent recommends the school committee move to approve the items by consensus as outlined below. I items A through K. Oh. Um, move to approve the items by consensus. Items, sorry. I, huh, I'm going to start again. Okay. The superintendent recommends the school committee move to approve items A through K. Um, under the items by consensus. Okay. So moved. Second. Okay. So a motion by Ms. Devlin, a second by Ms. Kavanaugh. Mina? Yes. I'm a yes. Nancy? Yes. Jen? Yes. And um, Mr. Graziano just texted me that he has boarded his plane. So he, <laughs> oh, well, he is no longer on our, on our call. Um, so that was four um, yes and one absent. Okay. So at this point, we have ended the regular public portion of our meeting. We do, I do need a motion. Um, yep, that was, that. so we'll do that at another meeting. So we'll bring um, the minutes back to the next meeting. So we will be moving into executive session. Following that, we'll come out just for the purposes of adjourning. Our next meeting is actually a week from tonight, February 8th, which is a joint meeting with the Board of Selectmen. I'm not sure where the location is yet, but that will be posted in plenty of time. Um, so I just need a motion to enter executive session for the purposes of conducting strategy, strategy sessions in preparations <coughs> for negotiations with non-unit personnel to include the superintendent, director of student services, and the athletic director. So moved. Okay, and a second? Second. Okay, so a motion by Ms. Devlin, a second by Ms. Kavanaugh. Nina? Yes. And I'm a yes, Nancy? Yes. And Jen? Yes. Okay, um, and Mr. Graziano is now absent. So this concludes the televised portion of our meeting. Thank you very much to HCAM and um, we will return. No? Yeah, we'll return just to adjourn.